Hi there. It's October 16th and we are in day 290. 290. A nice even number in our Through the Bible in one year. Today we are reading <clears throat> three chapters. Wow. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's three. Matthew 14, Mark 6, and Luke 9, 1 through 17. So let's begin. Change our version here. <clears throat> John the Baptist beheaded. Hmm. <clears throat> At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus. This is John the Baptist, he told his servants. He has been raised from the dead. <clears throat> and that's why supernatural powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, chained him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, since John had been telling him it's not lawful for you to have her. Lawful for you to have her. Right. <clears throat> Though he wanted to kill him, he feared the crowd, since they regarded him as a prophet. Whoops. <clears throat> But when Herod's birthday celebration came, Herodias' daughter danced before them and pleased Herod, so he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. And prompted by her mother, she answered, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. Although the king regretted it, he commanded that it be granted because of his oaths and his guests. So he set orders, orders and had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. And his disciples came, removed the corpse, buried it, and went about, and went and reported to Jesus. <clears throat> wow. When Jesus heard about it, he withdrew from there by boat to a remote place to be alone. When the crowds heard this, they followed him on foot from the towns. As he stepped ashore, he saw a huge crowd, felt compassion for them, and healed their sick. <clears throat> when evening Came. The disciples approached him and said, <clears throat> This place is a wilderness and it's already late. Send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. They don't need to go away, Jesus told them. You give them something to eat. <laughs> but we have only five loaves and two fishes here. <clears throat> they said to him, Bring them here to me, he said. Then he commanded the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed them. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. Everyone ate and was filled, <clears throat> and he picked up twelve baskets full of leftover pieces. I have a feeling I'm going to read this story more than once, right? Now those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. So said Jesus feeds the five thousand. I've always said he's probably looking at fifteen to twenty thousand people that he fed, because they had wives and they had children. <clears throat> they only counted the men walking on the water. <clears throat> Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After dismissing the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already over a mile from land, battered by the waves because the wind was against them. Around three in the morning, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and he cried out in fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them, Have courage, it is I. Do, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter answered, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come on, he said. <laughs> come on up. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those in the boat worshipped him and said, Truly you are the Son of God. <clears throat> Miraculous healings. Once they crossed over, they came they came to land at Gerasa, Ganesa, Gennesaret. Wow. <clears throat> When the men of that place recognized him, they alerted the whole vicinity and brought to him all who were sick. They were begging him that they might touch the tassel of his robe, and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Well, there you go. So that's Mark four, Matthew 14. Now we're going to read Mark 6. <clears throat> Rejection at Nazareth. 
He went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who had heard him were astonished. Where did this man get these things? They said. What is this wisdom given to him? How are these miracles performed by his hands? Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And aren't his sisters here with us? So they were offended by him. <laughs> of course. <clears throat> Jesus said to him, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his household. So he was not able to do any miracles. He was not able. I think he just didn't. Oh, crap. You want to read a note, and it slams you to the bottom of the page. Okay. <clears throat> they do a <clears throat> he said that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them, and he was amazed at their unbelief. Mm -hmm. Commissioning the Twelve. We read this yesterday and the day before, I think. Mm -hmm. Now he was going around the villages in a circuit teaching. He summoned the Twelve and began to send them out in pairs and gave them the authority over unclean spirits. <clears throat> he instructed them to take nothing for the road except a walking stick, no bread, no traveling bag, no money in their belts. They were to wear sandals, but not put on an extra shirt. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. If any place does not welcome you, and people refuse to listen to you, when you leave there, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and preached that people should repent, and they were driving out many demons, anointing many sick people with olive oil and healing them. There you go again, John the Baptist beheaded him. <clears throat> King Herod heard of this because, because Jesus' name had become well known. Some John, some said John the Baptist had been raised from the dead, and that's why supernatural powers were working him. But others said he's Elijah. Still others said he's a prophet, like one of the prophets. When Herod heard of that, he's, he said, John, the one I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had given orders to arrest John and chain him in the prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. Mm -hmm. John had been telling Herod, it's not lawful for you, for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias held a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but he could... <clears throat> so Herodias held a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not, because Herod was in awe of John and was protecting him, knowing he was a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard him, he would be very disturbed, yet would hear him gladly. Hmm. <clears throat> now an opportune time came on his birthday when Herod gave a daughter of his noblest of military commanders and leading men of Galilee. When Herodias' own daughter came and danced, she was she pleased Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, ask me whatever you want and I'll give it to you. So he swore oaths to her, whatever you ask me, I will give it to you up to half my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? John the Baptist said, she said. Immediately she heard the king and said, I want you to give me John the Baptist said on a platter right now. <clears throat> Will you marry somebody like that? Though the king was deeply distressed because of his oath and the guests, he did not want to refuse her. The king immediately sent for an executioner and commanded him to bring John the Bat to ring John's head. So we went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and removed his corpse and placed it in a tomb. Okay, feeding the 5,000 again. <clears throat> the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they, had, all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a remote place and rest for a while, for many people were coming and going, and they did not have time to eat. So they went away in a boat by themselves to a remote place. But many saw them leaving and recognized them. People ran there by land from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a huge crowd and had compassion on them because they, they were like sheep without a shepherd. Then he began to teach them many things. Right? When it was already late, <clears throat> his disciples approached him and said, this, this place is a wilderness and is already late. Send them away so they can... Go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. You give them something to eat, he responded. They said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? Go look. <clears throat> when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he instructed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. 
So they sat down in ranks of hundreds and fifties. Then they, then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves and kept, and kept giving them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. Everyone ate and was filled. They had picked up twelve baskets full of pieces of bread and fish. Now those who ate in the loaves were five thousand men, right, along with their wives and children. So you're probably talking closer to fifteen thousand, with five loaves and two fish. <clears throat> Walking on the water again. Immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After he said goodbye to them, he went away to the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. He saw them being battered as they as they rowed because the wind was against them. Around three in the morning, he came he came toward them walking on the sea, and wanted to pass and wanted to pass by them. I haven't read that part. When they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, and cried out for they saw him, for they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, "Have courage, it is I. Don't be afraid." Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were completely astounded because they. Had, because they did not understand about the loaves. Instead, their hearts were hardened. Hmm. Miraculous healings. When they crossed over, they came to the land of Cassanaret and beached the boat. And then they got out of the boat. People immediately recognized him. They hurried throughout the vicinity and began to carry the sick on mats to wherever he, they heard he was. Wherever he would go, into villages and towns of the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch them. Just a tassel of his herb, and everyone who touched it was made well. Hmm. Okay, Luke 9, 1 through 17. Now we read this part already. Commissioning the twelve. Summoning the twelve, he gave them power and authority over all the demons and the power to heal diseases. Then he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Take nothing for the road, he told them. No walking stick. Now one said a walking stick, right? No travel bag, no bread, no money, and don't take an extra shirt. <clears throat> Whatever house you win or stay there until... and. St Stay there and leave from there. If they do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake off the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and traveled from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing everywhere. <clears throat> Herod's desire to see Jesus. <clears throat> oh, this again. <laughs> Herod the Tetrarch heard about everything that was going on. He was perplexed because some of them said that John had been raised from the dead, some that Elijah had appeared, others that one of the ancient prophets had risen. I beheaded John Herzog, but who is this? I hear such things about, and he wanted to see him. <clears throat> when the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus all they had done. He'd, he took them along and withdrew privately to a town called Bethsaida. When the, when the crowds found out, they followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and cured those who needed healing. Late in the day, the twelve approached him and said, Send the crowd away so they can go surrounding villages, the countryside, and find food and lodging. Because we are in a deserted place here. You give them some food, he said. <laughs> we have no more than five loaves and two fish, he said, unless we go and buy food for all these people. For about 5,000 men were there. Then he told his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. So they did so. That would be 100 groups, right? And had them all set down. Then he took the five loaves and two fish, looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them. He kept them. He kept giving them to disciples to set before the crowd. Everyone ate and was filled, and they picked up twelve baskets of leftover pieces. There you go. <clears throat> now you got that story. Now it's been right. Tomorrow is just one book, John six. <laughs> Strange how they do that, huh? Well, there you go. Day two hundred and ninety. That was quite a bit of reading. So. There you have it. Catch up on any may have missed. We started the New Testament on September 30th. So you can go back and catch up if you want. You don't miss any. So you got the whole Bible in a year. All right. And tomorrow we'll keep on. On day 291, we'll keep going on. So until next time, keep reading. See you later.